नमो भगवती ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवती वासुदेवाय so hari krishna dear devotees thank you very much for joining us today wanted to seek your good wishes and your blessings so that we can uh, continue with the shrimad bhagavatam and also the blessings of our spiritual master shri apopa the guru parampara shri shri gonitai and radha krishna radha madhav krishna balaram radha shyam sundar to uh, seek their guidance and blessings so that uh, we can enter into the nectar of the bhagavatam these are really phenomenal chapters uh, of krishna's uh, childhood pastimes so chapter 10 uh, is uh, where we discuss about uh, nal and uh, nal kuvera and manigriva so uh, this is a nice verse from the 10th chapter uh, sorry the uh, 15th verse of the 10th chapter tari to niham stambho mukta sarva mada iha उटरी undergoing such compulsory austerities is good for him because this purifies him and completely frees him from false ego hmm. so sometimes people think it's a curse to have no money or no possessions being poor but if one is in the right mentality <clears throat> being poor is actually a benediction uh, some people feel oh you know i need loads of children need a good family home need nice cars but actually those things can be a horrible curses horrible curses because uh, not only they keep you in this world because of the attachment but also those things in themselves bring so much difficulty and one does not uh, necessarily realize um and the false ego is uh, very high i have all these things no you don't have this i have this but one who is uh, not got any wealth um because he if he is in the right mood he will have no false ego and this is a real benediction because in that mood he can take shelter of the lord in sincerity and uh, really receive the mercy of the lord so this is really interesting interesting uh interesting past time so what happened ah yeah so we continue with the damodar leela uh, to the delight of his friends he was pulling the motor this is the wooden motor he was <clears throat> tied down to krishna but where would he go aware that his mother could easily hear the gopas cheer krishna placed his finger to uh, his lips to calm them down so we we did this yesterday uh, we just uh, do a little bit uh, so we got a bit of continuity then he remembered narad muni's curse to the demigods recognizing the two stately arjun trees he decided to invoke his divine powers to liberate the demigods trapped in the trees krishna remembered the past lives of his demigods they were the sons of kuvera and lived a carefree life of opulence and sense enjoyment and like their father who dutifully managed the wealth of both the demigods and men as well so varun is although treasurer of the demigods he also oh kuvera so yeah he's a treasurer of the demigods but he is also looking after um the uh, us as well <clears throat> so the wealth on earth is partly due to his um his grace nal kuvera and manigriva they were his children they squandered their time loitering in chaitranath uh, gardens so often this happens the father is wealthy and the children are spoilt <laughs> this is generally the tendency uh, in this world and in heaven as well by the looks of it intoxicated and decorating themselves with jewels they enjoyed the company of young girls they were intoxicated not just by the varuni drink but also by the false pride 
thinking themselves unconquerable as the sons of Kuvair. So that's where this verse kicked in. Once they were enjoying with the Apsaras, <clears throat> within the holy waters of Ganga, due to arrogance, the demigods had abused the privilege granted them by Lord Shiva and committed the offense of using a holy place for sense enjoyment. Without notice, Narad Muni suddenly appeared. This is the greatness of the sage. He comes with a motive. That motive is not self-motivated. It's for the benefit of um, other living entities. He was absorbed in thoughts of Krishna's childhood pastimes. When the Apsaras <clears throat> noticed Narad, so they were enjoying with the heavenly girls, the two uh, Nalakvera and Manigriva, they were enjoying with the um, heavenly girls, the Apsaras. But the Apsaras, when they saw Narad Muni, they immediately covered their naked bodies and they warned the demigods, they warned Nalakvera and Manigriva, Narad Muni has come, cover yourselves. But the demigods, they were too intoxicated to hear or understand the warnings given by the girls to cover themselves. Not just intoxicated, it, there was a false pride within them. We are the sons of the treasure of the demigods. What harm can an ordinary sage do to us? Narad Muni thought <clears throat> to himself, the pride of the two demigods needs to be curbed so that they can become eligible for bhakti. Therefore, I will curse them. This is the power of the sage. He doesn't curse them for his own, because of his own anger. He curses them out of anger, no doubt, but in order to bring them closer to the Supreme Lord. Although it was an offense on the part of Narad to curse devatas, yet, because especially these devatas were worshippers of Lord Vish uh, Shiva. So it's not uh, proper etiquette for Narad Muni to curse the devatas, but yet he cursed them wanting to give them the opportunity to meet the two devatas, uh, meet to, for these two devatas to get direct vision of Krishna. Remember, he was absorbed in the pastime childhoods of Krishna, the childhood pastimes of Krishna. So uh, he wanted to give them the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Only the sages, the devotees, or the pure devotees can do that. Narad expressed anger at the two devatas, uh, not just at their ignorance, but also at their pride. Nalakuvera and Manigriva didn't seem to care, remained proud and indigent. Narad cursed them to become trees. However, Narad wanted the demigods to advance spiritually. So this is one of the um, acts of karma as well. If one wants to show off one's body because one is beautiful, then Possibly ne next birth, na Mother Nature will give the body of a tree because it has a, in the body of the tree, one can remain naked <laughs> for thousands of years. So here's Nalkavera and Managriva drinking, enjoying the Apsaras. They're hiding themselves because they see Narad Muni. But Narad Muni, they, these two are not at all scared by Narad Muni. <laughs> so, therefore, in the even in the body of the trees, he allowed them to be fully conscious of their past offenses. Of course, as trees, their consciousness level is very low. In order to be able to live in the tree, the soul has practically no feelings, you know, because it's very difficult to live in the, tree, uh, in the body of a tree with feelings. But in their case, Nalkav and Manigriva, Narad Muni may let them be fully conscious of their past offenses, uh, to remember Narad Muni's teachings as well, which he expressed to them for their spiritual upliftment. So this is um, from text eight to text 23 of this chapter, Narad Muni gave them wonderful, wonderful instructions. One of the verses that we read uh, was part of that instruction and also to be aware of their surroundings, as trees, normal trees would not even be aware of the surroundings. This was unlike normal trees. In this way, they progressed to pure devotion. Their progress to pure devotion would be unimpeded. Narad Muni thought, I cannot curse, give them a curse 
that does not result in bhakti. And this is the mood of Narad Muni and other great sages. Their curse will invariably lead the person who's been cursed to bhakti. That's real benediction. It's not a curse. When the devatas heard the curse, in one sense, they were relieved, as it would, could have been much worse. Narad Bundi could have cursed them to become demons. However, they made one request. Oh Lord, your punishment is suitable. You're right. However, if we must be trees, please allow us to take birth in the holy land of Brindavan. So they were intelligent as well, in one sense. By drinking Yamuna water, by standing in Braj's soil, and by being in the company of desire trees, we will obtain the seed of pure devotion. Narad Muni was pleased. He completed the curse by informing the demigods that Krishna was to appear on earth after 20,000 years. They would stand in the courtyard of his father, Nandamaraj, Nand Maharaj residence. This is a truly a fantastic blessing. After which, witnessing Krishna's pastimes as an infant, the Lord will personally deliver you from your curses, from your curse. So before the Apsara's unbelieving eyes, Nal Kuvera and Mani Griva disappeared from Kailash and appeared in far away Gokul as twin, twin saplings little baby trees. Nal turned towards the Apsaras who were, motion, who were motionless in fear of being cursed. So they were thinking, uh oh, we're next. <laughs> but Narad Muni simply gave them a warning glance. Although they had behaved indecently, they had shown the shame and remorse. They witnessed the activities of Narad and in them also the seed of devotion was planted in their hearts. And eventually, they would excel as Vaishnavis among celestials. So this is the association, a moment's association with a pure devotee can invoke or plant the seed of bhakti, which will grow eventually into prema. Narad was on his way to Vaikuntha to see Vishnu, Lord Vishnu. But having cursed the devotees of Lord Shiva, he decided instead to go to Badrikaksham and disclose his heart and mind to Narayan Rishi, Nar Narayan Rishi. <laughs> so he knew he shouldn't have cursed um, the devatas because they're devotees of Shiva. But yet he did it to give invoke bhakti in them. But because he had done that, um, that act, he didn't go and see Vishnu. He felt um, offense, offensive. So he went to no, no, I wish he revealed his heart. And then after that, he went to see Vishnu. Having relived the history of how the two demigods came to become trees in Gokul, Krishna knew that the initiative was his. Narad had promised the devatas that the Lord would, would free them from his curse. And Krishna was duty bound to keep the promise of his devotees. He would act according to Narad's will. So this is another aspect of the Supreme Lord. If the devotee <laughs> makes a promise, even the devotee can't fulfill it, Krishna will fulfill it. He's duty bound. He has to do it. And that's why he said to Yudhisthira at one point, because Yudhisthira would keep on um, making promises. He said to you, Duryodhan, okay, right at the final stage. If you win the battle against Bhim, you can have the kingdom. <laughs> and Krishna said, why do you keep doing this? You, you make me work so hard. <laughs> so Krishna thought in this situation, Narada is very dear to me. For his sake, I will free the devatas, bless them with supreme devotion, send them back to their abode. Leaning forward, Damuda began to slowly crawl on his hands and legs. His friends watched. They were like spellbound audience of a drama, too enthralled to move or speak. Sometimes Damodar pulled the motor. Sometimes a motor moved on its own. Both the rope and the motor were spiritual forms and could act according to their own will. Both wanted to serve Krishna in their own way. 
Slowly, the distance between Damudha and the trees was closing. Uh, intently gazing at his destination, Damudha took another few effortless steps while the mortar positioned itself between the two trees. For the first time since they had appeared, the Devita, Devatas felt the touch of the Supreme Lord via the conduit of the rope and the mortar. They shivered in ecstasy. The Gopas were still up on the hill. They were chatting and joking and fully enjoying Damudha's adventures. So they were watching him. They were enjoying, oh, with this mortar, he was going towards the trees. The true trees fell, felt an intolerable pressure leaning against them. Now, this is a little boy. He's two years, two months. <laughs> What sort of pressure can he exert against the two huge 20,000 year old uh, Arjun trees? Hmm. Then gradually, gracefully, the stately Arjun trees were uprooted. As the trees fell, their branches and trunks, they did not touch Damudar. These were huge trees, but nothing touched Damudar. The sound created was terrible. The first sound was the cracking of the trees being uprooted. And the second was the crashing of their hitting the ground. The sound was so loud that it caused the residents of Gokul to faint in shock. Only Krishna's friends were unaffected, covering their ears with their hands. They continued to sit where they were on top of the hill. They were calm fearless. When they tried to stand in order to help Krishna, they were unable to. So this was uh, Yoga Maya acting. Yoga Maya had immobilized them. Krishna needed some time alone to deliver Nalukuvera and Manigriva. Otherwise, how could he have instructed them if the Gopas were present? Thus the boys remained curiously immobile. But able to cast wondering glances at each other. So it was very un unusual what was happening. They were like uh, put in a standstill position, although they could watch each other, look at each other. They could see Krishna's pastime as well, but they couldn't hear anything. Krishna stood between the fallen trees and laughed just to show his immense uh, progress to the Gopas. Remember, this is, Krishna was... Uh, showing his leadership qualities here. He was saying, showing to the Gopas, hey, look what I've done. Fallen those trees, hey, I'm powerful. The thin rope for churning yogurt assumed such strength by the Lord's mercy. <laughs> Seated on the ground with his legs spread before him, Krishna entertained himself by flipping the rope and watching it wave to the mortar. He laughed to see the rope dancing. Although Krishna could uproot the powerful urgent trees, he was unable to free himself from his, of his mother's rope of affection. Now, this is the, another very inconceivable aspect of Godhead. <laughs> he could easily uproot the trees, but he couldn't free himself from mother's uh, tied up ropes. Suddenly the two effulgent forms of Nalakuvera and Manigriva emerged from the fallen trees. Here they are. And the Gopas could see this. Although they ha had been naked at the time of being cursed, they were now fully, now richly attired in celestial clothes, ornaments and crowns. Nara had ensured that they would not be unclothed when appearing before the Lord. The demigods rose in the air and their striking beauty radiated splendor throughout the surroundings. The demigods thought, here is the Supreme Lord for whom we have been waiting for so long. They bowed before the Lord. Krishna continued to play with the rope and mortar. He acknowledged their presence with a brief glance. However, he seemed more interested in playing than in the demigods. So the demigods were surprised, they were shocked in fact. This is the Supreme Lord Krishna, but he's more enjoying the uh, pastimes with the, the rope and the mortar. Krishna was, after all, still a little child. Demigods had a wonderful exchange with Krishna. 
and offered praise to the Lord while the Lord prayed. Played. Played. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In their bewilderment, the demigods just shook their heads and kneeled before Krishna and said, God, you say. We cannot understand your lordship. In trying to do so, we become confused and disoriented. Therefore, it is better that we simply offer our basis unto you and chant your names and glories. They were confused, disoriented, because he was behaving like an ordinary child. Mm -hmm. This is very uh, inconceivable. And he was very convincing as an ordinary child. <laughs> Krishna then stopped playing and he turned his attention to the devatas. Oh, yeah. You are right. I am the Supreme Lord. But if you fail to know me, then how can you say that I am who? If you fail to know me, how, then how can you say that I am who you think I am? So Krishna's questioning them. You think I'm the Supreme Lord. How do you know? How do you know? I am. Absolutely I am. But how do you know? This confused the demigods even more. And seeing their plight, Krishna showed mercy on the brothers and showed him his two-handed form with the flute. So this is his eternal 16-year-old boy, two-handed form with the flute. The demigods were in ecstasy. Then they offered wonderful praise and prayers. Understanding that the bridge of Asis will soon be coming due to the noise of the falling of the trees, the demigods asked Krishna's permission to depart. Before leaving, they requested that they become servants of the Gopas in Bandavan. Pleased by their humility, he advised them to go to Narad Muni. By his grace, he will fulfill their desires. This is Krishna tearing the tea, two teas down with the mortar and the rope and the two devatas rise. He also told them that they can ask for a boon. And they asked to be blessed with pure devotion. They also offered prayers which made Krishna laugh as he was shackled to the mortar. He thought, these are not really ropes, but bonds of my mother's love. While I am bound by her love, demigods are bound by my maya. <laughs> Although they call me the Lord of Gokul, I am tied like a calf. What kind of Lord is that? While they're praising me, the scolding of mother is so much more pleasing. <laughs> so they were praying to him and we pray to the Lord to please him. But the Lord, what is he pleased with? The bhakti of his devotees. That's what pleases him. So we can offer prayers. Of course, we must offer prayers. But what's more important is the seva that we do for him. That's far more, that's what pleases him. <laughs> and spontaneous love like Yashoda Mai has, that can only be attained by the mercy of the bridge bases and by mercy of Krishna. So Krishna replied, your past life and Narad Muni's kindness to you is well known to me. Had Narad not desired it, I would never have shown mercy to you, offenders. Uh, Krishna is really putting it down on the line, you know. <laughs> that would, that would be that um, would not would have been that would have been contrary to everything I stand for. If that has been offensive to a devotee. Krishna cannot tolerate that. But the devotee is so kind. He ignores the offense and he wants to give the mercy of Krishna to uh, the offender. See the kindness of Krishna and then see the kindness of the devotee. And then Krishna has no choice in this matter. Even if he doesn't want to show the mercy, he has to. <laughs> However, Narada was so kind to you, regardless of your offensive behavior and awarded you punishment that would bring you to your senses. He took away the source of your blindness which was your wealth. <laughs> but by Nairat's mercy, you have already been freed from your bondage. Therefore, ask for um, uh, my mercy, 
Gratuitously, gratuitously. Had you not seen Narad, you would not be seeing me. Hence your suffering would have continued. So this is the power of the devotee. Krishna wanted to wrap up the conversation with the two demigods so that he can get on with the more important matter of playing with the Gopas. Raising his right hand in gesture of blessings, Krishna said, Nalakuvera Manigriva, you may both return home where your family is eagerly awaiting you. As for your desire to be always absorbed in my service, I assure you that it will be fulfilled in a way that your domestic life will not pause, pose a obstacle. Whatever you want will be fulfilled by Narad's desire. By the grace, by his grace, you have developed love for me, thus attain the topmost goal of life. Keep Narad always in your heart because I am always in his heart. You shall never be separated from me. Your material existence has now come to an end. Sure, extraordinary. Nalukuvera and Manigriva were heartbroken to leave the Lord, but they had to. Bowing down one more time, the demigods turned and rose into the sky and sorrowfully looked back at Gokul, which had been their home for so long, and they left for heaven. With the demigods gone, Krishna was now free to resume his role as coward boy and he longed for his friends. Standing up to better see over the fallen branches, he caught sight of them in the distance and signaled to them to come and play with him. The boys were now free from their invisible bonds and were reunited with their glorious friend. There you go. Suddenly they were able to come and join him. They were seeing, they were watching these devatas paying obeisances. They were amazed. What's going on? <laughs> they didn't know whether to cheer or to caution Krishna. Wait till your mother sees your latest antics. You think the mortar punishment was bad? She will tie you to these other trees and make you stay here overnight. <laughs> the boys laughed at Krishna. However, Krishna crossed his arms and said in defiance, I will pull mountains if I want to. And of course he did, right? <laughs> the boys laughed, raising his voice. He said, wait and see. Not only when I move a mountain, I will also lift it. You wait and see. So Krishna predicted uh, Govardhan Puja, Govardhan uh, lifting of the Govardhan mountain. Sri Dham said, Go on. We will wait for that day, but now tell us, who are those two beings you were, you were talking to? <laughs> the boys had seen what had happened in uh, in the description, what had happened to Krishna. However, Krishna tried to downplay his role in toppling the trees. These boys will never hold a secret, he was thinking. Oh, they were just spirits living in the tree who broke out of the tree when the curse finished. The gopis were not, the gopas were not convinced, but Krishna changed the subject and started playing with the mortar. A new game! <laughs> always finding somehow to play with the Gopas, his best friends. In the meantime, the Brijavasis, they had fainted, if you recall, that they, they were all in shock. This noise was so loud, shocking. They looked around to see what could have caused such a terrible sound. It sounded like thunder, but the sky was clear. Some Gopis visiting from Ravel came across Krishna and his friends playing among the fallen trees, and they reported this to Yashoda Mai. She was in a great anxiety. The noise had also made her faint. She thought the trees had fallen on Krishna, and she'd fainted out of great anxiety. In her faint, mother was in a panic and was running towards Krishna to rescue him, but actually the la ladies were trying to um, revive her. In the meantime, Nan Maharaj returned with Rohini and Balaram, Nand Baba quickly headed towards the scene of a calamity. Perhaps a demon had attacked Krishna again. The Gopas took sticks as weapons. Uh, they were ready to defend Krishna, no matter what. Some of the boys noticed the Gopas coming and they warned Krishna, whoa, you're in trouble now. Krishna told the Gopas to hide. The boys were giggling and with Krishna 
having great fun in this adventure. The coward boys looked for Krishna, but not seeing him, they looked for demons or signs of demons, like footprints, but they found nothing. At that time, Yashoda Mai and her friends arrived and she was frantic with worry. You can just imagine, where is Krishna? Nobody can find Krishna. The trees had fallen, the big noises. Is there demons? It is said that the force of the devotee's pure ecstasy can reach such heights as to neutralize Krishna's divinity. With his mother present, Krishna was unable to remain hidden. He whispered to his friends, let us surprise them before they discover us. So Krishna and his friends started playing with, mortar in the, with the mortar in the open. And the Vijabhasis, they saw them safe. They were so happy. How did he appear so suddenly, especially if he was still struggling with the mortar? At first, the Vijabhasis could not make the connection between Krishna, the mortar, and the trees. However, Yashoda Mai recognized the relationship because she tied him up to the mortar. <laughs> so she could see between the three I think then she thought to herself what, what, what if the trees had fallen on Krishna she was speechless and immobile when her husband and the others rushed to Krishna Yashoda Mai she remained where she was fighting to see through the tears so that's the end of chapter 10 we'll finish off the rest of this pastime tomorrow um, but yeah, the end is uh, coming very soon to this glorious, glorious pastime. Why did not she go close to Krishna? Because she was feeling very, very guilty. Oh, I tied him up. And the trees could have hurt him, could have killed him. And she was also petrified of what Nand Maharaj will do to her because she put Krishna in danger. So she stayed well away. Must have been a heartbreaking situation. Mm -hmm. So, any questions, any comments on uh, chapter Krishna 10? Guru. Hare Hare Guru. Guru. Hare yes, we, see, we see that uh, uh, Narad Muni was a pure devotee and he was a Mahajan. Mm. A Mahajan. So, among those 12 Mahajan, he's one. So, his Lila is quite very, very. Uh, instructive. Okay, Revolta. Thank you. But he was more than Mahajan. If you look at the Mahajans, yes, you know Bhishma and Yamraj, um, you know Bali, Prahlad. They more or less worship the Lord. Yes, the mood of awe and reverence. Mm -hmm. But Narad Muni's relationship. Is beyond that. It's That's beyond it. the Mahajans. You know, he can actually, he can bless in such a way that even the most sinful person, and these the Nalkaver Manigriva were not that sinful. <laughs> <laughs> there were others that Narad Muni had come across who were like um, Mugragri, you know, the, the hunter. He was so yeah. sinful. But yet, just moment association with Narad completely changed his mood and attitude. So Narad Muni's status is somewhat different from the Mahajans. So his uh, level of purity is such high, so high that the Lord becomes forced to uh, do whatever he desires. You know, he's got, the Lord has got no choice. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you for that. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. The striking thing is that we read that a uh, moment's association of pure devotees can mm. deliver the souls. So the two apsras, in spite of what they were doing, they were sort of liberated or they were sort of, uh, uh, yes, from the, they did not curse, but in fact they were liberated from their actions. So it was that's something that will stick in their mind yeah very powerful yeah very very powerful mm. it said um <clears throat> one of the verses we read in the bhagavatam i think it was the first canto it says mother ganga you have to bathe again and again to get purified but if you get just one moment's association of a pure devotee that can completely liberate you so the power of the devotee's association 
second to none. And uh, this is where Prabhupada, you know, he's <laughs> through his, he's not even present on this planet, but yet his books are still having such impact to the devote, to, to the world, you know. <laughs> See the power of the devotees association. He's not even present. <laughs> yet his books are transforming people's hearts, you know. <laughs> Yes, on Sunday, the 1st of August, we went to the manor and uh, we were shown, it's called Reconnect mm. by the School of Bhakti. And uh, we were shown around to the Goshala and uh, the whole the manor and we went to Srila Prabhupada Chambers. Mm. It is so spiritually, it's, it's so different when you go out to the inside of the room and where he was staying, his bedroom, etc. It mm -hmm. was just spiritually charged. Yeah, very true. Very true. Still got a lot of potency that place. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, we're very fortunate to be in a, in a time of uh, Popa, really. It's mm. not even just, we mm. just missed him, but it, we haven't missed him at all. His presence is still here. He's no less than Narad Muni, no less. I have my personal opinion, he's the greatest spiritual master ever existed. Nobody can beat Prabhupada. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Maharaj used to say Shaktivya Shavata. Shaktivya mm -hmm. Shavata, yeah. <laughs> 13th margin. 13th margin. <laughs> but he was more than margin. <laughs> Just like Narad Muni is more than margin. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, can I? Um, uh, come on. Yeah, it is uh, with grandchildren in the park, so <laughs> he left me a message to say if I can read the instructions. Oh, yes, go for it. Please, please. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Kije. This is the instructions for Canto 10, Chapter 10. In this chapter, we learn how Krishna makes the words, wishes, and desires of his pure devotee like Narad Muni. Uh, true, which is always are uh, for the ultimate benefit for everyone concerned. Narad Muni cursed the two demigods. Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport that <clears throat> a pure devotee always engages in pure service. Oh, I won't be able to say this. Taking birth in the upper planetary system as a demigod is a chance to become a further purified devotee and go back home, back to Godhead. Narad Muni indirectly gave Manikriva and Nalakuver the greatest opportunity by his so-called curse. Krishna's pure devotees are very merciful and ultimate well-wishers of every living entity. We are instructed to learn to extend these wishes to others by remaining in their service, serving the servant of the servant of the servant. Hare Krishna. Ser Krishna. Servant of, of, of Krishna. Very Hare good. Krishna. Thank you so much. Okay, any more comments or questions? Sundil, uh, sorry? Uh, yes. yes, just not even. Oh, you know the two type of the trees, it says either are they both Arjuna trees or Yarjuna and Yamla? I could not understand 